It's about as un-American as it gets. It's an affront to public education and it undermines church-state separation, which is at the foundation of our democracy. An effort to open the nation's first religious charter school is facing another roadblock. Tonight, we're digging into the proposal to open the St. Isidore of Seville Catholic Online School and the legal challenge filed today. Now, let's take a look at the timeline when this all started, and it started back in December. That's when Attorney General, then Attorney General, John O'Connor argued that the state should allow religious charter schools. He issued an opinion saying that banning these schools is a violation of free speech. Even then, there were concerns being raised about religious charter schools blurring the lines with separation of church and state. For months, we've heard about indoctrination in schools, and this is actually the Republican Party actually literally indoctrinating our schools, taking public tax dollars and funneling them to private or charter religious schools. In his opinion, O'Connor pointed to the decision from the U.S. Supreme Court stating that religious charter schools can't be excluded from state programs that allow parents to send their children to private schools using government finance scholarship or tuition programs. At that time, we hadn't seen any applications for religious charter schools, but in January, that all changed. The Catholic Archdiocese of Oklahoma City submitted an application for St. Isidore of Seville Catholic Virtual School and presented their proposal to a statewide virtual charter school board in February. The application called for the Catholic school to be funded by taxpayers. One group says that this would be a direct violation of the First Amendment. The First Amendment requires that public schools be neutral on issues of religion. This is a fundamental and historic safeguard that's essential to protecting religious freedom, and that ensures that students and their families, not school officials, make their own decisions about religion. Now, O'Connor said that the state's ban on religious charter schools should not be enforced. Now, that opinion was withdrawn in February by Attorney General Gitner Drummond. In April, the board unanimously voted to reject the application for religious charter school, pointing to seven details that need to be cleared up on the archdiocese application. Another application was then submitted for St. Isidore, and then on June 5th, the board reversed, approving it. We sat down with Attorney General Gitner Drummond the next day to discuss the vote. Here's what we had to say. It was clearly unconstitutional and disappointing. I mean, the, we have three rogue actors on this school board that, although well informed that uh, approving the charter application by St. Isidore would violate the Oklahoma and federal constitution, they did it anyway. Now granting the Catholic charter, if there is a satanic application, we have to grant it. If there's a, a Sharia law applicant, we have to grant that. And I think, although Oklahomans in general would support any Christian activity, this is not about Christian and non-Christian. This is about, you know, the rule of law. Now, just two weeks after that decision, the board held a special meeting to address the potential legal challenges. One issue, whether one board member, Brian Bobeck, was even able to take the vote that unanimously greenlighted the application. While he was appointed by Speaker uh, Charles McCall, the week of the vote, the Attorney General is adamant that his legal term isn't to begin and won't begin until November 1st. During that special meeting, they approved a motion to start searching for legal counsel to represent them against the AG or other parties challenging the St. Isidore contract. So today, St. Isidore, the Charter School Board, and a number of others involved are being hit with a lawsuit. And we have insight tonight into that legal challenge from the very people involved in the case. Fox Vice Tom Ferguson joins us live with more from them. So, Tom, opinions are firmly divided here. Wayne, that's a good way to put it. This is a major question before the courts now, and I'm hearing that where this case goes could have far reaching impact here in Oklahoma and across the entire nation. This is the lawsuit filed on Monday at the Oklahoma County District Court. It's a challenge to the Oklahoma statewide virtual charter school board's decision to greenlight the St. Isidore of Seville Catholic Virtual School. This suit argues the school is illegal on multiple fronts. For example, the suit says St. Isidore's will, quote, discriminate based on religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, and other protected characteristics, and, quote, asserts a right to discriminate against students on the basis of disability. And it's so important to keep public schools 
welcoming to all. And just to be clear, that's not the case here. St. Isidore's has made clear, if you go to their website, that they will only admit families that basically pass their religious test. A board member for the school is responding, saying, uh, Catholic schools accept all comers, we always have. Uh, and uh, charter schools are actually required by Oklahoma statutes to accept all comers. That's something we've already agreed with, so it's really a non-question. The suit also arguing St. Isidore's religious education would violate the Oklahoma Constitution and Charter Schools Act. An Oklahoma minister fighting against the school in court says, You just can't use people's tax dollars to promote or establish religion. It puts all of us at risk. However, the school says if the state denying St. Isidore's the right to operate a charter school based on its religious affiliation would in itself be an issue. Oklahoma statute and constitution provisions for prohibiting religious participation is unconstitutional. This brings us to another sticking point. Are charter schools state actors that have to follow the same rules as your traditional neighborhood public school? Do recent Supreme Court cases ruling private religious schools have to be included in voucher programs have any bearing here? Charter schools are public schools. They're not private schools. And that's why this is so significant and so different. That They seem to be indicating that no tax dollars uh, can go to any religious school, which uh, if, if we're reading that correctly, it seems to implicate all the existing school choice programs. Uh, that's going to be a big problem for them in the courtroom. Legal issues aside, there is more disagreement about the role schools like St. Isidore's play in impacting public education funding. The school choice movement is really rooted in uh, completely defunding and dismantling our public school system, um, and that is a threat to us all. You know, we, when we see a need that, that must be met, the Catholic Church steps forward. Uh, to meet that need. And we see this need in the rural areas and spe specifically with kids who have uh, learning disabilities that, that they, they need more options. Parents need more options for their kids. And we intend to meet those needs. Now that board member told me that the school was expecting to sign its charter contract in September. The suit filed today asked for an injunction that would prevent that as the case plays out. If that's granted, the timeline for the school's opening would be unknown. Reporting live, Tom Ferguson, back to you. Responding to the lawsuit today in a statement provided to Fox 25, Walters says suing the Catholic charter school is, quote, religious persecution because of one's faith, which is the very reason that religious freedom is constitutionally protected. Speaking with a Christian lobbyist on the matter last week, Walters reaffirmed his stance that the Christian Bible is essential to teach in classrooms due to the proximity to American history and values. How in the world do you teach kids about the inalienable rights given to them by their creator? How do you talk to them about the Great Awakening, which really stirred up so many Americans into fighting for not only their religious beliefs, but the fact that if you have so much control over your, your, your destiny and understanding the Bible, don't, shouldn't you also have the same kind of control over your elected officials? And, you know, the reality is, is the left wants to rewrite our history. They want to strip any kind of faith out of our schools. They are assaulting every aspect of our society. They want to break down the family, and they, they want to continue this frontal attack on Christianity. The state superintendent also says that he will, quote, always side for an individual's right to choose religious freedom in education. Now, Walters' stance on religious freedom in schools has brought scrutiny to his office with one group, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, calling on his resignation following Walters' defense of a Board of Education member who prayed at a school graduation. Threatening the Tulsa School District with uh, its accreditation because they told a school board member that, that she couldn't pray during graduation ceremonies. And this is long established constitutional law. And the school district did the right thing. And here he is using his bully pulpit to miseducate and to threaten. And if it's following a series of inappropriate statements and actions by him that crossed the line that show that he is much more interested in promoting religion than he is in being the superintendent of our public schools where he's entrusted to enforce the law and make sure that our public schools are educating and not indoctrinating in religion. 
The co-president of the foundation, which promotes the constitutional right to separation of church and state, says the state superintendent is, quote, essentially a Christian nationalist using his office as a way to publicize his own views. We asked Governor Kevin Stitt about where he stood on religious charter schools in light of today's lawsuit. Here's what we had to say. I, be I beloved charter schools. I think more options, more school options are good and healthy, and I think that's what Oklahomans want. I always come back to Santa Fe South. Most people don't realize this. They have 4,000 kids at Santa Fe South in their charter school with 1,000 on the waiting list. So the fact that we're the first state to authorize more charter schools and religious charter schools, I think it's a great thing. Uh, that means that uh, if, if the Catholics want to want to set up a charter school specifically in McAllister, Oklahoma, uh, to educate their community and parents choose to go there, that's a great thing. And if the Jewish community wants to set up a, uh, a, a Jewish charter school, that's an awesome thing. If the, if the Muslims want to set up a charter school and their parents want to go there, that's an awesome thing. Parents want to influence and they want to be involved in their kids' lives. We need more parent involvement. And so charter schools, they're public schools with community management. And so we're made up of communities here in Oklahoma and taxpayers. And so to, to unlock more school options, I'm always going to be supportive of that. Now, State previously applauded the state's virtual charter school board members for their, quote, courage to authorize the proposed St. Isidore School. And that was your big story breakdown. You can find more on the lawsuit filed today and the St. Isidore proposal on our website, okcfox.com.